Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Uh, so today I thought I would talk about some of my personal experience being a Depop and Poshmark seller and kind of some of the pros and cons to both of those platforms. Uh, also, if you're interested, my earrings are from Forever 21 and the shirt that I'm wearing that has little cats riding on donuts on it is from Five Below for $5, in case you were wondering. And if you're new here, I'm Christina and I talk about things like fashion hauls and thrift hauls. Um, and I'm a part-time reseller. I just started reselling about a year ago, and I think I've finally gotten the hang of some of these uh, different platforms for reselling. So I just thought I would share some of my experiences, some of the pros and cons to Depop and Poshmark. Um, and if you like this and would like more videos like this and would like to know more about what it's like to get started reselling, um, Leave me a comment down below and let me know and like and subscribe. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. Press the subscribe button and the little bell notification down below so that you get notified every time that I make a video. All right, well, let's get into this video. So like most people, I started my reselling um, part-time just from things in my closet that I didn't really want anymore. Um, and I started on Poshmark, and at first it was very, very slow. I didn't really have a lot of followers. I wasn't checking it constantly. I wasn't on it all the time. I was still kind of trying to figure it all out. Um, and during that time, I really wish that someone had told me about these different tips and tricks and some of the pros and cons for both Poshmark and Depop. I started my Poshmark and Depop around the same time and I didn't really understand the differences between the two because I figured, you know, all selling apps are kind of the same, which they're not. All selling apps are different, have different fees, have different rules, different shipping things, uh, different policies. So this is just to let you all know if you are thinking about maybe becoming a reseller, uh, some of the things you might want to think about. So I thought I'd go ahead and start this conversation by talking about Depop. So if you don't know what Depop is, it's an app very similar to Poshmark, but it also has a couple of unique differences. So Depop, I don't know if it's been around as long as Poshmark has. Um, but it's generally sellers who are trying to sell very unique, um, mostly vintage or homemade items. So it's kind of like Poshmark and Etsy kind of put together, if that makes any sense. Um, so usually if you're looking for something really unique or different or you're looking for that vintage kind of vibe and you're not really necessarily looking for a particular brand or a particular piece, then Depop is probably the right place for you. Um, and if you like selling homemade things or you like thrifting and you think you might want to sell some really unique pieces that maybe aren't designer pieces or aren't name brands necessarily, then that might be a good platform for you to use. Um, and then some of the other things about it is it, um, it also has a lot of collector's items on there. So like, uh, for instance, with the brand Lazy Oaf, um, there's a lot of Lazy Oaf items on Depop. Um, and a lot of people sell their collections or will trade different things to try and add to their collections. Or um, what I use Depop for mostly is to try to expand my uh, Fairy K pastel sweater collection. So that's what I kind of use it for. Um, and then some of the other things is just uh, some of the unique traits of Depop is that you can kind of control as a seller uh, the prices, not only the prices of the items, but also how much shipping costs. So you can do your own shipping and make it free. A lot of people do that. They'll have items in their shop that are like $20, $25, $30, and then they'll give free shipping. 
Um, you can also decide to do bundles with free shipping. That's what I've done is I've got mine set to where if anyone buys two items, they automatically get free shipping. Uh, and by the way, I'll have my Depop and my Poshmark linked down below, so you can check that out if you want. Um, and I feel like with Depop, it's not near as important to kind of create a theme for your shop necessarily. Whereas on Poshmark, it seems like people get a lot more creative with that. Um, and I don't know if that's just because of the people I'm following or if that's an actual trend across both apps. Um, but yeah, so that's something that you can do is adjust the shipping price. Um, I have noticed recently that if you decide to ship with Poshmark, which is what I usually do, or ship with Depop, sorry, um, they will give you the shipping label already, whereas if you do your own shipping, you may have to kind of figure out uh, what to do there, and that can get kind of complicated. I also wanted to mention just briefly about Depop and Poshmark is the difference in getting paid, which I kind of forgot to do until I went through what I had already written down in my notes. So. Um, some of the differences is that with Poshmark, uh, you actually don't get paid as a seller until the person that you sold to says that they received their item and that it is as described, um, and they don't have any complaints about it. Um, if they file a complaint, um, you may have to give them a refund or something like that. I've never had that happen before, but that's just what the procedure is. Whereas on Depop, um, basically if you buy something from someone on Depop, your money uh, goes from your PayPal and it automatically gets withdrawn from your PayPal or your debit card or whatever you have set up um, as your payment method and it goes instantly to the seller. So that means that they don't need to wait until you've confirmed that you got your item they don't need to wait until you say that it's as described. So you do have to be a little bit more careful with what you buy on Depop because there are a lot of people out there, unfortunately, who try to scam people and who will just take the money and run, basically. So you do have to be a little bit more careful about that. Thankfully, PayPal does have some ways of helping out if something like that does happen. Um, so I would highly recommend using PayPal for everything in Depop because that's what I do and I just feel like that gives me some kind of security because then I know that if something does go wrong that at least I have someone I can contact other than Depop because I've heard that the people that actually like do customer service and things with Depop are not always the best um, at getting things like that resolved if something like that does happen. So I just wanted to get that out there um, just to let you all be aware of that. Usually what I do is I've got it set on my Depop where if someone buys something I'm going to ship it through the app, through Depop, because if you don't then it depends more on the weight of the item and it's kind of unpredictable how much it might cost you at the post office and I'm not that great at calculating out exactly what that will be so I think it's just easier and simpler to ship through Depop and let them kind of decide the shipping price. Uh, so I go through their app and they kind of have a little guide to help you that says small items should be this much, medium sized items that are about this weight should be this much. That way I can kind of have an idea of what to do. So that's what I use. Um, and I've also found that if you ship with a very low shipping price, you don't always get priority mail for some reason. And I prefer to ship using priority mail because it just gets to the seller a lot faster and it's free for me. So I can go to any post office and ask them for a priority mail envelope and they will give it to me for free. And all I have to do is put the item in the envelope and put the free little shipping label on top of it and they even give you the tape at the post office if you ship with priority mail um, 
but if you don't then you have to get your own envelopes or boxes and use your own tape and that can get kind of pricey so I just go ahead and use priority mail even though it makes the shipping costs a little bit more expensive for the customer I feel like it's just a better experience and they're able to get their items in about three days instead of maybe a week or so and so that just makes everyone happier um then on Depop sometimes they have really great sales whereas on Poshmark I feel like they don't have as many like amazing sales but on Depop every once in a while they'll do like a free shipping weekend where if you buy so much money's worth of stuff you get free shipping no matter what which is awesome um, and I've been able to get a couple of pieces that way that I didn't know if I could afford but I was able to get it for a much re more reasonable price uh, one time they even did $25 with free shipping so it it was a great great experience and I was able to get a lot of things sold that weekend as well it's great for sellers it's great for buyers it's just it's really great um, but Poshmark doesn't always have that um, Poshmark has parties which are a little bit different and I'll explain that a little bit more uh, later on in the video but it, it's not really the same as a sale that's all throughout the app So another thing that I really appreciate about Depop is that they will have a recommended for you section, which I think is really cool and I kind of wish Poshmark would adapt and use this idea because I think it would be really, really cool. Um, basically, they uh, the app takes notice of things that you like um, and things that you save on your page. So if you see something that someone else has posted for sale and you're like, oh wow, that's a really cool item. You can click the like button or the save button. And after you've done that a couple of times with different people's shops, it'll kind of figure out what you like, um, whether that's more girly things or more goth things or more like unique vintage things. It'll eventually kind of figure it out and then it'll have this little page that you can go to that says that's um, a for you page where it suggests things for you. So then instead of searching through all these different shops, it kind of helps you find things that you might like uh, much faster. And I've been able to find things that were amazing through this. And sometimes it's a little off, you know, because... It can't always predict exactly what you would like, but sometimes it's dead on. So I really appreciate that, and Poshmark doesn't have anything like that that I know of, so I kind of wish that they would adapt to that, but every app is different. And then another thing that is a little bit frustrating about Depop, one of the downsides, is that their fees are kind of large. And I feel like they've been going up on their fees recently. I don't know if that's just every app is having higher fees or if it's just Depop. I don't know. But it seems like their fees are getting more and more expensive. So I'm going to have to raise the prices in my shop if it keeps going like that. And they've also raised shipping prices. Um, I think you used to be able to ship priority mail for about 7 or $8.00. And now it's like 9 or 10, which I think is a little bit ridiculous, but I, I know that priority mail is worth it, so I do it anyway. So, and then another thing that's a little bit frustrating is the uh, following limit on Depop. So on Poshmark, you can follow as many people and as many stores and closets as you like. Whereas on Depop, you can't do that. You can only follow so many people, and then it basically informs you that you can't follow any more people. That you're, you're full, basically. Um, and so then, 
you can't really access. I mean, you can access as many shops as you want, but I really like being able to follow people so that I can keep up with what they're selling and it shows up on my feed more, but it makes it a little tough to do that when I can't have as many as I would like or I can't just follow people willy-nilly if I like their stuff. I have to be a little bit more selective, whereas on Poshmark, I can follow anyone. If Even if I don't really like their stuff, I can follow them anyway. And I've also found that it's really hard to gain followers on Depop. I don't know why, but I've been on Depop for about a year and I only have roughly around 2,000 followers. Uh, whereas on Poshmark, I have a lot more than that. Um, but on Poshmark, there's incentives to follow people. And I'll talk about that a little bit more when I switch over to Poshmark. But it's just kind of frustrating to keep sharing my stuff and keep adding things and keep sharing it on Instagram and to get maybe five followers a day whereas on Poshmark I'm constantly getting followers so then it's easier for me to share my stuff with more people and then more people might be interested and that adds up to more sales. So I think that's about everything that I wanted to talk about with Depop. So we'll go ahead and switch to some of the things that I like and dislike about uh, working with Poshmark. Something that I like about Poshmark is that um, the shipping is a little bit easier, it's a little less expensive. Shipping on Poshmark is just a flat rate of about $6, which I think is fairly reasonable. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's a bundle or if it's just one item, it's six dollars which is great and it makes it a lot easier for uh, my buyers because they already know that they know that no matter what they buy on the app it's gonna be approximately six dollars for shipping and that's just all throughout the app whereas on Depop like I mentioned before it could be nine dollars it could be free it could be just about anything. I've even seen people have shipping as high as like $15 on Depop, which I think is crazy because I would never buy anything online from a store or something with shipping being like $15. I mean, unless it was overseas, maybe? I don't but that that's one of the great things about Poshmark is that the shipping is kind of a flat rate and it's just as easy as Depop to ship things. So basically you get you get priority mail with that six dollars. So that means you can go to any post office in the US and you could get a free priority mail envelope and with Poshmark and Depop they email you the shipping label so all you have to do is print it off, stick it on the envelope and put your items in and send it and it's free for you. So that's really great. Um, I've also noticed recently that Poshmark's fees have gotten a little higher, even though the shipping has stayed the same. So I really appreciate that the shipping has stayed around $6, but I've noticed that the amount of money that Poshmark takes out of each individual sale has started to get a little higher as well. So I don't know if that's, again, every reselling app. I don't know if, if that's the same on things like eBay or Macari. I think that's how you say that one. But that's just what's happening on Poshmark and Depop from what I can tell. So Depop kind of focuses more on unique vintage items whereas Poshmark is more name brand items and designer stuff. So it's kind of frustrating sometimes because um, I really enjoy vintage pieces so sometimes it's hard to find those on Poshmark because they might not have a specific brand so then it's harder to search for them um, and sometimes if you don't have a brand it's it's really difficult to find it and if you're selling something that doesn't necessarily have a brand, it can be hard for your followers to find it or for people who might be interested in buying it to find it on your page. 
so that's kind of frustrating. Um, but it's nice if you're looking for a specific designer or a specific brand, like maybe you're looking for Madewell jeans, then that would be easy. You just put in Madewell jeans and it pops right up. And uh, you can even search for very, very specific styles of things if you're looking for a very specific piece. Um, but it's a little harder to find unique um, vintage items or homemade items. So if that's more your thing, you might want to try Depop, but if more uh, name brand department stores and um, other big retailers is more your thing, then maybe Poshmark would be better. And it also depends on what stuff you have in your inventory. So sometimes I post some things to Poshmark that I don't post to Depop because I feel like it would do better on Poshmark because the people that follow me on there are probably looking for that specific style or that specific brand and I don't think it will do as well on my Depop. So that's just something to consider. And then also um, one thing that I mentioned before was the different parties. Parties on Poshmark are kind of like, they're not really sales, but it's like a group thing where you can share your items from your closet that fit whatever the theme is for that party. So I believe uh, one that's going on right now is best in bags. So if you have any handbags, uh, purses, wallets, things like that, then you can share that to the party page and that way even people who aren't following you can see it which I think is a really interesting idea because then you don't necessarily have to have a huge number of followers for people to be able to see it. So that's fantastic. Um, and also it just gives you a chance to see other people's stuff that maybe you don't follow. So you can always click on the party and kind of scroll through and see if there's anything you're interested in and maybe you can find someone who has very similar tastes to you. And then finally, my last thing with uh, Poshmark that I've kind of recently mentioned uh, when I was talking about Depop was that there is no limit on how many followers you can have. So that means I can follow everyone who follows me, and I do. I follow almost everyone that follows me unless, unless they've been sharing something that's offensive or something. Um, and so basically you can follow as many people as you want, which is great, and you can find people to follow very easily. And there are incentives to follow people, because in order to become a Poshmark ambassador, you have to have so many people who are following you and you have to be following so many people. So that means people are more motivated to follow you because they want that title of Poshmark Ambassador. And if you want me to make a whole nother video about what it means to be a Poshmark Ambassador, I can, um, or I can just kind of briefly throw it in here. Um, I am a Poshmark Ambassador. I've been for a couple of months now. So basically what that means is I get exclusive deals and parties that some people might not be able to get into. And I am also able to sell wholesale items on my page as well, which I haven't actually started doing yet, but I've been considering it for a little while. Uh, so that's basically my rundown of Depop and Poshmark. I think I've covered about anything. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and ask. Um, I've also sold on eBay before, so if you have any confusion about that or you want to hear my input on what it's like to sell on eBay, I don't sell on eBay very often. Um, for reasons that I can go into in another video if needed. Um, but yeah, just let me know what you think, uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this, what your experiences are as a reseller if you are one, and any frustrations you've had with either the Depop or Poshmark uh, app. And until next time, I will see you later. Thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe if you haven't already. Bye!